I'm also going to give you a few homework problems from the next section, which I'm about to introduce. Section 7.6 is about what's called improper integrals. If there are improper integrals, by the very nature of that name, that means there should be proper integrals. This begs a question, what are proper integrals? Proper integrals are ordinary integrals that you've been doing all along. So what makes an improper integral? Some integral that's just not very nice, it's improper. Well, kinda. There's two ways improper integrals arise. Most typically, the, the main kind of example we're gonna consider is when one limit of integration or both involve infinity. Maybe the upper limit of integration is plus infinity and or the lower limit of integration is minus infinity. That's one way and the most typical way we're gonna consider improper integrals. Another way improper integrals can arise is if the function you're integrating has a vertical asymptote over the interval that you're integrating over. That's another way improper integrals can arise. Let's do the first kind. Let's say we're integrating one over x cubed and the interval of integration is gonna be, let's say one to infinity. We'll be looking at applications of these on Friday and also next week. One to infinity. That's an improper interval because of the infinity. In this class, I'm telling you right now, you must do what I'm about to show you. Otherwise you will not get full credit. In other classes past this one, your teacher may or may not require you to do what I'm about to show you. I want you to realize that this is really a limit. Oh no, limits. Limits don't go away completely in this class. They come back. One place they come back is right now. Another place they come back is in chapters um, nine and 10, sequences and series. As with limits with derivatives and integrals, you often can avoid the limit sign, but I don't want you to. Here, I want you to, for full credit, to put the limit sign because conceptually speaking, I want to emphasize that that's what's really going on. That's what truly makes this an improper integral is it's a limit of proper integrals. What proper integrals? It's a limit of proper integrals where the upper limit of the integral is a variable. And that variable, I'll call it B, is the thing that's going off to infinity here. So this is a definition. By definition, this improper integral with the infinity sign up there is a limit of proper integrals of the same function, which I'll write as x to the negative three. So it's a little easier to integrate as the upper limit of the integral goes to infinity. Now, you know from past experience, especially in Calc 1 even, that limits may or may not exist. So this limit, though it's a definition, may or may not exist. If it does exist, we say the improper integral converges. And if it doesn't exist, we say the improper integral diverges. I will write that down in a bit here, but not right now. So I want to see if this one does converge or diverge to begin with. You must carry the limit sign along for sake of correctness and clarity. But you know that integral right there is a, an ordinary integral. I can do it as an ordinary integral, use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Antiderivative of x to the negative three is x to the negative two divided by negative two, right? Add one to the exponent and divide by the same number. 
evaluated from one to B. Trickiest thing here is not to make a mistake with negative signs. First plug in B, and I think I'll bring the negative sign out in front. B to the negative two is the same as one divided by B to the positive two, so I'll write this. And then I'm subtracting what I get when I plug in one. Careful about minus signs. I have another minus sign here. And let's simplify a little bit before we take the limit. The two negative signs cancel to give you a plus sign. I'm going to write this as plus one half minus one over two b squared. And as b goes to infinity, as b gets arbitrarily large, one over two b squared goes to zero. Right? More precisely, one over two b squared can be made as close to zero as I want by making b big enough. For example, if I want one over two b squared to be less than 0.1, just a little side calculation here. If I want one over two b squared to be less than 0.1, how big does b need to be? That would mean two b squared is bigger than 10, which means b squared is bigger than five, which means b is bigger than square root of five. If I made this be a 0 0.01, then this would be 100, this would be a 50, this would be square root of 50, et cetera. I could consider lots of examples like that. I can make this as small as I like by making B big enough. So the limit here is 1 half minus 0, which is 1 half. This limit does exist. That means this improper integral does make sense. We say the improper integral converges. Because this limit exists. You can say the improper integral converges, or you could say the improper integral is convergent. What's the, what's the meaning of this? Why do we get a finite number here? I mean, doesn't the graph go on forever and ever? Yes, it does. Here's what the graph looks like at first. It does go on forever and ever to the right. So the area under it is the area of a region that goes on forever and ever to the right. And somehow we're saying that area is one half. Is that possible? Is that a paradox? It only seems to be. It turns out it's not a paradox. And it does make sense to say this area, even though the region itself goes on forever and ever to the right without ever actually touching the axis here, still has a finite area. Now, of course, nobody can literally draw a region that goes on forever and ever, right? Nobody can literally draw that. So it's only in our minds that we imagine it going on forever and ever. And so the only real question is, is that a good thing to imagine? Does it have any applications? And the answer is yes, it does. In particular, what we're going to look at, especially starting Friday and then going into next week, is applications to statistics and probability. Bell-shaped curves, normal distributions, if you've heard of those things before, it's relevant for that. If you've taken stats, you know about those. Even if you haven't taken stats, well, you're going to learn a little stats. It's our main application. It's also relevant for physics. And improper integrals uh, come up also in differential equations with something called Laplace transforms. 
to solve differential equations. That's a convergent example. How about a divergent example? This example doesn't look too much different, actually. The function that we're integrating has a pretty similar looking graph. So this purple graph here is supposed to be the graph of y equals one over x cubed. Let me draw a red graph in the same picture. That's gonna be the graph of one over y equals one over square root of x. Square root of two is about 1.4. One divided by 1.4 is, I don't know, 0.7 to eight something. The graph of one over square root of x is decreasing toward the x-axis though not as fast. It does still approach the x-axis as x goes to infinity. I can make it as close to the x-axis as I want by going far enough to the right. However, because it doesn't approach the x-axis very fast, it turns out its area is infinite. And this improper integral is going to be divergent. It's going to, we say it diverges. I haven't proved that yet, but that's what's going to happen. Let's prove that now by a calculation. By definition, this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from one to b of this function, which I will write, write as x to the negative one half power. Just carry the limit sign along. Make sure you do only take the limit at the very end. This is very important to get full credit. Antiderivative of x to the negative one half as x to the positive one half divided by one half. Dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two. So you're gonna get the limit as b goes to infinity of two times the square root of b minus two times the square root of one, which is two. That limit does not exist. D N E Y because it doesn't equal a number. Some people go ahead and write equals, and I'm going to go ahead and do that with quotes around the equals, equals infinity. But I prefer you say does not exist. When you write equals infinity, that does not mean infinity is a number. It's just describing the way this limit diverges, does not exist. In a graph, I'm not going to take the time to graph this function of b, but watch my hands here. The graph of this as a function of b is going to be like this. It's going to be increasing and concave down, but it will not have a horizontal asymptote. Any horizontal line you draw, it'll eventually get higher than it. For example, if you draw a horizontal line at 1,000, this does get eventually bigger than 1,000. How big does B need to be to make this bigger than 1,000? Just solve this inequality for B. Square root of B must be bigger than 501. B would have to be bigger than 501 squared, which is over 250,000. You can make it higher than a million by taking B somewhere in the ballpark of a trillion. A million is 10 to the sixth, the trillion is 10 to the 12th. You can make it higher than a Google, 10 to the 100, by making B bigger than 10 to the 200, roughly speaking. This does not have any horizontal asymptotes. The limit does not exist. And that means the improper integral diverges or is divergent. Either way to say it is okay. 